Welcome everyone back to church. I'm so excited that today is the day after Boxing Day. I don't know about you, but you're probably lying there feeling slightly bloated and slightly guilty about how much chocolate and sweets and dinner you've had over the last couple of days. And you've probably put a little bit of weight on over Christmas. But now you're starting to think about how am I going to lose this extra weight and stuff like that. I remember one year I put on a stone and a half in the space of a week. It was quite dramatic, shall we say, the difference. <laughs> I put on a lot of weight around the face and in the gut. Well, and I don't think I've ever lost it. But <laughs> anyway, I just want to just start with a word of prayer. Let's just open our service by praying together. God, we thank you so much that we are able to be here today. Thank you so much that we can be in your presence, that we can still come to you however we feel, whether we feel bloated or not, whatever our expression is, God, whatever the, the things happening in our life, right now we can turn to you, the God who loves us, the God who calls us. And God, thank you that we've got this time together just to praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. See, this isn't going to be a long service today, but I just want us to start with a quick thought. And my thought is, what is the next year going to hold? I said it was a quick thought, and that is not a quick thought. But have we started to think about next year yet? Have you started to make plans? Have you started thinking about what's going to be different? What are you excited about? What are you fearful about even? You know, um, well, the vaccines and stuff like that that's coming out. Um, have you got, you know, is, are you optimist about it? Or are you a pessimist about it? Um, how do you feel? I don't know about you, but I'm having to trust so much in God right now, more than I ever have before. And that's what we should be doing. See, we've got to remember what it says in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your pathway straight. See, if this was ever a thought, to start to think about a new year, I think this is the best thing we can do, is submit to God. So just as we're approaching new year, as we're taking this time together this morning, let's just submit ourselves to God. Let's just worship God with a couple of songs now. And let's just lean not on our understanding, but let's lean into Him. Let's lean into His understanding. Let's ask Him to reveal His ways and His plans. So that as we start this journey of into 2021 together, that we just see God move in ways that we can't even begin to dream or imagine. So let's just sing some songs together.
is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Let's sing. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy.
Today is the last Sunday that we're going to be able to be together in 2020. And what a year it's been. You might not have believed that anything that has happened this year could have happened this year. You know, so much stuff has happened during the last 12 months that I'm sure it's going to take a lot of time and even sometimes years to process the journey that we've all been on as a society, as um, a people, as a culture, as um, all these different things. And as Christmas is now passing away and we're beginning to focus on a new year, I just want us to stop ourselves for a minute. As I said earlier, I want us to completely commit ourselves to loving God. I want to commit ourselves to being one with God, and then not only that, then one with each other. See, it's too easy to just want to connect with God on our own terms and do our own things, our way, the way we like to do it. But we're reminded by Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, before he went to the cross, he prayed a very simple prayer. He was praying for different things, and then in verse 20, he says this, my prayer is not for them alone, because he was praying for the disciples. He said, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, the message that the disciples give, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, 
may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So my challenge is this, is are our hearts united with God? And then are our hearts united with God? your brothers and sisters, with the ones that God has given you to journey with in our church? Are we united together? Do we have complete unity with them? Or are we allowing something to come in to disengage us from that unity, to disengage us from church? Are you fully engaged in the journey of church, in the journey that God has put us on as a church? Are we fully engaged together? Have we allowed anything to disconnect us, whatever that is? Because we should have no way of being disconnected from God and from each other if we truly love each other, if we truly get involved with each other. Obviously, as a pastor, I'm going to urge you, get involved with the life of the church. Get involved with what's happening. You know, pray together. Let's look to restart things together when we're able to. Let's look to engage and pray um, in small groups and large groups. Let's just connect with each other. Let's just look after one another in love. Let's just let each other know that we care about each other, that we love each other, that we're ready to journey with each other. We can only do that if we open our mouths and share together. So if you are disconnected, please look at ways that you can get reconnected. Please reconnect with each other, with me, with anybody within the church family. I invite you all to get involved both physically and virtually. Physi the physical side of things will come back and the virtual side of things will not go away. From now on, we will be both a physical and virtual community. That's a, it's a way of life that will be from now on. So please get connected and stay connected in any and all aspects that you possibly can. Don't let yourself be isolated or alone. Don't let yourself be, uh, feel like you're on the outside looking in. Don't think it's just you and God. Don't think I'll be okay, it's just me and God. Or even worse, don't think that it's just you and your own and you're abandoned by God. That's never what we're called to be as a community. We're never called to be um, solo, isolated heroes, but we're all called to be united together in love. And as we unite together in love, then people will see that and know that we have the truth. See, we're all called to have the same beliefs, the same way of life, even though our expressions are vastly different, even though the way we live that out to the world is completely different because we are different. Thankfully, we're not all clones. We're not all um, you know, just fitting in with each other. We're individuals who are called to be individually amazing. Because the thing is, it says in Ephesians 4, verses 4 to 6, it says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. See, we are all called by the same message to believe the same message. And that message started with, with Christmas. That message started there and it ends with Easter. That's the message of hope that we believe in. We're all called and we're asked to follow Jesus. We're asked to follow the example that he's given us of how to live our lives. And then we're also called to submit the same way Jesus did by giving his own, very own life for each other, for, for us so we're supposed to do that for each other. We're all called to be together. We're all called to be united together in love. We're all called to be of one mindset. Whereas we don't claim victory over each other, we're not trying to get one up on each other, but we're called to submit, to serve, and be humble with each other. We're called to seek God first and his righteousness, and then God will give us everything else that we need. Why? Because we have the same hope. We give God the same position in our own lives. We're not trying to 
do anything else except serve God and serve what he is doing in our community, in our lives, in our area. We're all called together to have faith and individually have faith. We're all called to have faith that as we step out into the unknown, whatever 2021 will bring, as we step out and we risk everything to follow God, that he will meet us at that point of risk. He'll meet us at that point of faith and actually show us who he really is. He'll reveal to us as we risk everything in faith, he will show us that he is God and that he will guide us and protect us. We are baptized into the same family. We're all called to be born again into the family of God. We're all called to believe in the same God and pray only to him. We only pray to God. We don't put anything else above him. We trust in him. See, we do this seeking God to move in our lives and through the lives of many in our family, in our area, in our community, and, and wider and beyond and even into the world. You know what? And we're so many expressions. Why? So we can reach so many people. Thankfully, I'm not like any of you, and thankfully, all of you aren't like me. Thankfully, we've all got different ways of expressing the faith and the journey that God's given us. We're not clones, but we are called to just live out the life that God's given us to live and live it to the full. See, in all our ways, we as one, we acknowledge God. We have the same beliefs, we have the same core, and then he will direct all of our paths to wherever the end may be. Thankfully, we get to do this together. We don't get to do it alone. And we all get to celebrate each other's victories as they're our own. When somebody believes in God, no matter who they are, that's a victory for that person. That's a victory for God. That's a victory for our church. That's a victory for every individual. Why? Because we all believe the same thing. We all believe in the same one. So I want to encourage you, if you feel on the outside at the minute, if you feel excluded, if you feel that you're not part of things, I want to encourage you to re-engage re-engage with things, learn new ways. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to go wherever God encourages you to go, to step out in faith and trust in him that as you live out whatever that is, that God will meet you there. If you're involved with church and if you feel part of things and if you feel like you're engaging well, then I encourage you to keep doing that and keep allowing your heart to become one with those around us, with those who surround us. Allow us all to be united in our hearts with the beliefs of God. And what will happen if we do that? What will happen if we truly allow ourselves to be in love with God and then in love with each other and love each other and care for each other? Then the world will know that Jesus is who you said he is. And Jesus did what he did to show the world the love of God, to show the world that they are invited into this relationship too. What did the verse say? Verse 23 It says, then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And that's in John 17, verse 23. We're called to be brought to complete unity. Thankfully, not uniformity, but complete unity with all of our brothers and sisters so that we can know that Jesus was sent by God and that God loves us even as he loved Jesus. That's the beauty of it. Jesus gets revealed to those around us as we truly love one another, as we truly care for one another. So please don't allow anything to come between you and loving your brothers and sisters. Don't allow anything to come between you and firstly and foremostly loving God with all of your heart. If you're not in that place and you want to be in that place today, just stop everything you're doing right now and just give your life to God. Say, Jesus, I accept the gift that you give me through belief in you and what you did on the cross. Just do that right now. 
And if you know God and have been journeying with him for a while, just continue to redevote yourself to God daily and say, come and have your way. Come and show me how I can connect with my brothers and sisters and then how we as one with one heart and one mind can then display this to the world. Let's just pray together. God, we thank you that we are united in love. We are united in your love. And just as you have loved us, so we can go and love the world the same way. We can go and love everything around us the same way. We can show the love and compassion that you've shown us in our lives to others. God, I pray that we won't just be distant, we won't just be removed, but we will be present. We'll be present with you. We'll be in your presence. We will stay in your presence. We will stay in that place of knowing you, of hearing your voice and responding to that voice. And then not only that, then we will also then allow that love to permeate out through us into our relationships with our brothers and sisters so that we can be united to them with one heart, with one mind, and that we can love each other as we love ourselves. God, thank you so much for this message. Thank you so much that uh, we can recalibrate as we start a new year. It's what we often do. So God, we just bring all of 2020 to you, God. As this year is coming to a close this week, we bring it to you. We lay it at your feet and we say, thank you for what you've been doing in 2020. Thank you for, even though we haven't seen a lot of the, the pattern of the grand design of how this is all gonna work out for good, God, we know we can trust in you. We know that we can step forward in faith in you. And as we step forward in faith into 2021, may we just celebrate with our family and friends that you are doing a new thing, that new things are going to happen and will happen in our lives, in this church's life, in this area's life, in this country's life, in this world's life. Whatever is happening right now, God, we just say, come and bless what you are doing. Come and enhance what you are doing. God, we want to see more of you. We want to know you better. We want to know you more. We want to know you in a greater capacity than we ever have. And God, we want to see your glory revealed to this area. So God, come and have your way. Come and speak to us. Come and lead us in your pathways. And may you direct our paths. May you make our pathways straight. May you make our pathways go wherever you want to lead us. And lead us to that place where we will risk everything in faith to see you and your glory revealed. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. And I'm so excited about the year of 2021 that we've got ahead of us. So please just have an amazing time over the new year period. Stay safe, look after yourself, and know God's love and blessing as we journey together into this new year and as we celebrate everything God has done in 2020. Sometimes it's hard to see the silver lining. Sometimes it's hard to see the goodness for all the other stuff that goes on and the other distractions that can distract us. But let's remember the amazing things that have happened. Let's not lose track of how amazing our God is. Let's not lose track of how God protects us and blesses us on a daily basis. And let's just celebrate the new year together. God bless you all, and I'll see you in the new year.